Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. Okay, I wanted to go over a couple of quotation finger oddball uh, asthma medications. It's more that they're just not used as much as that kind of uh, beta-2 agonist or anticholinergics or uh, inhaled steroids. Uh, and so we just want to at least touch on them to understand what they do. So again, we're going to go back to our what asthma is all about, that episodic bronchoconstriction and inflammation. And with these medications, uh, we're really talking about, uh, with theophylline, we're talking about primarily being a bronchodilator, so taking care of that opening of the airway. But Montelukas, uh, Cromelin, Omalizumab, pred, Methylpred, um, all of these are really uh, meant to reduce inflammation. So let's take a look at a couple of them and maybe some details about them. So theophylline, there's also aminophylline, uh, which is kind of a combination, uh, but the big thing to kind of take away is that we're, we're working about the bronchodilation, so this is the um, opening up of that airway. Uh, it relaxes the smooth muscles and opens the airway, so if you look in theophylline and aminophylline, you see O-P-I-N, O-P-I-N, so uh, one way to remind you that it's the bronchodilator side uh, more than the anti-inflammatory side. Uh, I have a little coffee cup here because it's chemically a methylxanthine, uh, so it is chemically similar to caffeine. So if you want to think about what it's like to have too many cups of coffee, uh, you have the idea of what it is to have uh, toxicity from theophylline. And I'll get to the um, uh, narrow therapeutic window in the next slide. Uh, it does have a lot of drug interactions, um, and this is why it's really fallen out of favor. Uh, they still have it, it's just um, something that we just don't use very often. Uh, but you do want to check for potential interactions uh, with those other drugs, and uh, the blood tests are going to be kind of part of this. So when we look at a narrow therapeutic window, I thought of a castle and how they had those arrow slits. Uh, and the narrow therapeutic window is between 10 and 20 micrograms per milliliter. And so if you think of the T uh, within this arrow slit, and I intentionally picked the T, uh, to combine the T from theophylline, the T from therapeutic, the T from 10, and the T from 20. So the four T's and this narrow therapeutic window are maybe a good way to remember theophylline has this 10 to 20. Uh, Montelukast, I changed the colors a little bit because when you think of singular, it's kind of like that Claritin clear where you've got this picture of you know blue skies and green grass. Um, this is for asthma and COPD that's refractory to other medications. It's just not, uh, the other medicines are just not doing it. Uh, it's a leukotriene inhibitor, uh, but you know, what does that mean? Well, a leukotriene inhibitor is going to um, come from the mast cells and uh, really it's going to be part of that kind of cascade of the, um, you know, asthmatic response. And so when we look at adverse effects, uh, I put neuropsychiatric event because this is exactly what's on uh, the documents, but um, really I think that you're going to see something like suicidal ideation or something like that. But uh, neuropsychiatric events is, is obviously a real concern, especially since we're uh, talking about a medication that's often used with children. Um, LFTs are, are probably a consideration uh, with liver. Uh, and then uh, you really don't use this alone. Um, you, you really use this as something to add to an asthma um, you know, treatment regimen, but you, you don't use it alone. And it's not called singular because you, <laughs> you don't use it alone. It's, it's called singular because it's once daily dosing. And if you look at Zafer Lucas, what I think was the first one that came out, uh, that one was four times a day. So when you come out with one that you only have to take once a day, it's going to kind of knock the other one off the market. And I think that's exactly what happened. Uh, but look at the Lucast ending uh, to remind you about the leukotrienes uh, inhibitor as something that's going to uh, improve asthma. Okay, this is chromalin, which is 
uh, Intel. Um, we use this for asthma and COPD, and it's what's called a mast cell. <laughs> This is chromalin, and it's, again, for asthma, COPD, it's a mast cell stabilizer. Uh, think about the M for mast, and I've got a couple of pictures of ships here. And the idea is that you're kind of going through the storm here uh, until we stabilize the mast, and uh, we get this nice placid kind of view of a sailboat. And the idea is that to stabilize the mast cell is to stop releasing all of those uh, things that are going to cause the you know asthmatic and allergic reactions in terms of adverse effect you get kind of a dry mouth a real irritation of the throat and kind of a cough with it uh, so where you were rinsing your mouth out with inhaled steroids to avoid thrush in this case you're maybe gargling or rinsing your mouth out a little bit to avoid the irritation and to avoid that cough uh, contraindications, really rare, rare short shortness of breath or something like that. Um, don't often use IV steroids, uh, so this is not necessarily an oddball as much as it is that it's just much more rare. Uh, so something like asthma would benefit from uh, methylpred if you did have an asthma attack. Uh, it is a steroid anti-inflammatory. And it's tough to say in terms of side effects because you're talking about uh, using it for a couple of days probably where you know maybe agitation change in mood maybe a little bit of weight gain but again we're, we're talking a much shorter term steroid use uh, infections always kind of an issue um, you know we suppressing the immune system anytime we're giving a steroid and then uh, this is used in combination so albuterol, ipratropium, uh, remembering that albuterol is that beta-2 agonist, it's a bronchodilator, and ipratropium is the anticholinergic that really relaxes uh, those uh, lungs. Okay. Uh, omelizumab, Zolaire, uh, this is kind of a last resort for many people who have uh, allergic asthma or chronic hives where you don't know why they have hives, and then nasal polyps. Uh, it's an IgE blocker, so it binds that IgE antibody on mast cells and basophils and uh, stops kind of the cascade, uh, if you would. Uh, Flu-like symptoms might be one of the adverse effects, but the, the real thing to, to worry about is that anaphylaxis can occur in the first dose and beyond. And this kind of makes sense because of the way that the anaphylaxis cascade goes. But uh, again, just recognizing that anaphylaxis could happen, and so... Uh, making sure that the patient is aware that, okay, we're going to watch you while we give it to you, but we're also going to ask you to watch yourself as you kind of move on. And then last thing, it, this is a subcutaneous dosage, so uh, a little bit different than all the inhalers we've been talking about. Again, this is for informational purposes only, so it is not medical advice. If you have a medical condition, consult a medical professional. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.